statute. The second one, the one I deal with more often because it's more objective, believe it or not, it doesn't depend on words like reasonable and unreasonable. Uh, it's section uh, 13 uh, and of the, of the Clayton Act, but it's called the Robinson-Patman Act. And there it relates to prohibiting price discrimination. And it says that it's illegal to discriminate in price between different purchasers of commodities of like grade and quality. Now, commodities means goods, uh, uh, things that are manufactured that are substantially interchangeable, where the effect of such discrimination may be substantially to lessen competition or to tend to create a monopoly in any line of commerce or to injure, destroy, or prevent competition with any person who either grants or knowingly receives the benefit of such discrimination or with customers of either of them. But it says that differentials, which make differentials meaning in price, which make only due allowance for differences in the cost of manufacture, sale, or delivery, resulting from the differing methods or quantities in which such commodities are to uh, such purchasers sold or delivered, if the statute says you can discriminate to that extent if it's cost justified. Um, and it also says that a seller uh, can show that he met a, in good faith, a price that was being offered by a competitor to meet but not go below a, an equally low price of a competitor or the services or facilities furnished by a competitor. Then, finally, the robinson Patent Act uh, surprisingly prohibits uh, what is known as commercial bribery, where somebody, in order to encourage the corporation to do something for them, makes a payment off the books without the corporation knowing it to an employee of the corporation, and then it becomes illegal commercial bribery and a violation of the antitrust laws of the United States. And it's also illegal to knowingly induce or receive a discrimination in price, which is outlawed by the robinson Patent Act, and that's the section that I always use when suing major retailers uh, claiming that they knew or should have known that the price they received, which is really half what the manufacturer paid to make it, uh, is is unlawful because it is lower, much lower than the price that the competitors were being charged at the same time for the same goods. Now we have the Clayton Act. The Clayton Act has a few things that you should know about. Section 14, the sale on agreement not to use the goods of a competitor, where the prohibition is that uh, you can't sell goods uh, on the condition, agreement, or understanding that the lessee or purchaser thereof shall not use or deal in the goods, wares, merchandise, machinery, supplies, or other commodities of a competitor, where this may, where this agreement may be to substantially lessen competition or tend to create a monopoly in any line of commerce. Uh, then Section 18 of the Clayton Act. Uh, has the, the illegality of one corporation to acquire the stock uh, or assets of another where in any line of commerce or in any activity affecting commerce in any section of the country, the effect of such acquisition may be substantially to lessen competition or tend to create a monopoly. There's a prohibition upon interlocking directorates and officers where if it would be illegal to acquire, you can't have illegal, you can't have the same officers and directors overlapping where one officer serves on the boards of both companies which themselves wouldn't be allowed to be acquired. Then Section 24 says that, that the directors and agents of the corporations uh, are liable personally saying that whenever a corporation shall violate any of the penal provisions of the antitrust laws, such violations shall be deemed to be also that of the individual directors, officers, or agents of such corporation, 
who shall have authorized, ordered, or done any of the acts constituting in whole or in part such violation. And it shall be a misdemeanor upon conviction. They can be fined not exceeding $5,000 or a year in jail or both. Section 26, injunctive relief. Uh, any firm, corporation, person, association shall be entitled to sue for injunctive relief in any court of the United States against threatened loss or damage by a violation of the antitrust laws. So that uh, that is something to seek injunctive relief uh, in addition to damages. Uh, Major League Baseball has a questionable exemption to some extent. Um, the definition of the antitrust laws it also includes Section 45 of the Federal Trade Commission Act, which applies to, as applying to unfair methods of competition. I wanted to point out that before going into the Federal Trade Commission Act that the most recent decision of the United States Supreme Court as to the Robinson-Patman statute uh, said something that is uh, uh, quite timely, that they, the Supreme Court held that the antitrust laws are not superior to the securities statutes of the United States because, as they found in the year 2007, that the existence of regulatory authority, that is the SEC, under the securities laws to supervise the, active, the activities in question existed. And the evidence was that the SEC exercised that authority. And therefore, the antitrust laws were not applied, even though if that determination had not been made, there would have been a violation of the antitrust laws. The SEC said that there, there's sort of like a preemption when you have federal regulation, uh, then the antitrust laws don't apply if there's conflict. We now know that there isn't any real regulation and that the antitrust laws should have been applied. As I've been trying to tell you, we need to have application of the antitrust laws. And that's just an instance back in 2007 when the U.S. Supreme Court found that it wasn't necessary because of supposed government regulation. The Federal Trade Commission Act is the fourth one, fourth antitrust statute as to Section 45. And what it says that unfair methods of competition in or affecting commerce and unfair or deceptive acts or practices in or, in or affecting commerce are hereby declared unlawful. So that is all there is. That's, that's the antitrust laws in the United States. It's a heck of a lot less than the bankruptcy statutes or the tax statutes or domestic relations and things. It's a very simple thing, which I have down on six pages with the red line as to the important parts. And I'm, I've posted these already for you to look at on Internet if you want to read these and see what the actual text is of all these statutes, the, the important parts of the text I have here at carlperson.com forward slash antitrust.pdf. So back to my commentary here, and it's uh, taking two videos undoubtedly, that since the Nixon administration starting in 1969, there has been little meaningful antitrust enforcement by government, with the courts making it virtually impossible for private enterprise or private enforcement of the antitrust law. The enforcers wind up working for the regulated companies or their 